still live from our headquarters in Lagos and Nigeria. This is still Enterprise. A morning and now to our main conversation for today. The Nigerian Army headquarters has commenced an investigation into a viral video of protesting soldiers kept in overcrowded cells and protesting poor feeding at the 8th Division Detention Facility in Sokoto State, which led to one of the protesting soldiers being shot in the process. A statement by Army spokesman Major General Onyema Wachuku noted that the incident was unfortunate and embarrassing. But the matter is under investigation. Army authorities say they are working to determine whether this was an isolated or widespread situation in similar detention facilities. But it has also vowed to not condone um, the method in which the inmates express their grievances. Mutiny is traditionally considered a grievous misconduct in the military, and the Sokoto incident amounts to no less. Perhaps this was entirely avoidable, but it's yet another unpleasant situation in our hands. But as always, our first question is, why? Master Tunji, you're still with us. I'd love to thank you so much for being around. And just like you, you, you heard, the, the question still remains, why? Why must we always be reactive to, to issues? You know, whoever is incarcerated, you know, um, should be given the 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 leeway the opportunity of survival if you incarcerate someone it's your responsibility to take care of them and knowing that these are former military officers don't you think this is really bad yeah it's not it's not limited to the uh, military uh, 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 situation uh, it's general in nigeria even the even the so-called um a correctional center, what they call correctional center today, they, our prison, you know, they call it, they now call it correctional mm -hmm. center. It's not, it's not anywhere to collect anybody. It's just a mere, you see, the, this, we have this one mindset in this country. Once you are seen as uh, being a, 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 a ledge of committing crime offense, you are seen as somebody who should not even be, who should be, who should, who should not enjoy any, 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 anything in life. You should be abandoned and you should be treated like a, uh, somebody who should be, that with so that is the mindset if we do have, if we have a mindset that look putting somebody in custody or detention or whatever is to correct and make that person think that what he has done is not good we will make sure that that environment is conducive then what we we'll do is that look even those who are not even are we, are we even talking about we are even making an error we're, we're talking about prison people who are not in prison how are they being taken care of <laughs> even their houses are there that living the normal uh, barracks, uh, uh, barracks yeah. that they give them. How does it look like? Does it look like it's a, a place where that is 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 habitable uh, uh, for? It's not it's not conducive enough for ordinary for a reasonable person to 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 be there, and that is what we are seeing. So you see, we that attitude of, uh, that we, are, we have is the reason why people have been people who have been uh, alleged of an offence have been treated like uh, uh, people who are seen as a. Uh, Outcast or something, or people who are not longer supposed to be in a, a part of us. So, and uh, as long as uh, and by our law, anybody, uh, when, you, when, you, when you are alleged of any offense, you are presumed innocent. On the contrary, it's proof. In other words, you are still, you still have that liberty of being treated like a, like a, 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 a an innocent a, a person, person who has not committed any offense. But uh, that is not the case in the country. Once you are alleged, you have become you have become a criminal. That's how you see the uh, police who allege you of an offense and they start slapping you. They, they in the name of they want to parade you or they want to they want to ask you question or this and that. They slap you, they beat you, they do sort of things to 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 to. to. So uh, it's, it's it's not it's our culture. It's our culture. Our, we don't uh, seem to know that. Look, once we don't treat ourselves very well, people outside will not treat us well. And then uh, our, our, we don't have a neighboring environment for everything. Not only the the custody. Look at the schools, where you look at you go to some states and you see the primary schools that people study under. Some people sit on the floor. Some people don't even have any roof on their on their head. When it rains, they'll be there. Some are under the tree. So that culture is the pro is what it, we are taking to that. Uh, the particular, and again, in the military, they even see you as a once you are a soldier or whatever. They, you cannot even, don't even have any any right to say anything. Hmm. You are supposed to take everything they give to you, whether you are, and they see it as a, a way of uh, making you uh, discipline. 
But yeah, is so, that supposed to be a universal thing in the military, or is it uh, peculiar to to uh, to Nigeria? Uh, unfortunately, I've not studied any other uh, the military of other, other other state, and I've not been to the to, to I've not studied it, so I won't be able to ca uh, categorically state uh -huh. that is not a is is either whether it's peculiar or it's not peculiar to Nigeria. But from my but my little experience that I, or little thing that I know, uh -huh. I think I I want to say that uh, Nigeria generally. That is the way we do things. It's peculiar in a way to us the way because I know some other states or other countries. Mm. They, if you see the the environment alone, will tell you that they don't treat these people uh, badly mm. because uh, when you are seen as a prisoner or you are alleged of an offense and you are taken uh, to custody and you stay in the, an environment that where the African Nigerians that we call a uh, rich man in Nigeria stays and then that is where your prison, what they call your prison, then uh, you, that is that is to suggest that you are, they have been treated well. Yeah, but in Nigeria, it's not the case. The, you do, do want to look at look at the, the, the custodies where they put people, even in police uh, uh, custody. The, what I've been told is that uh, the same place where you have been you have been detained is the same place where they do their uh, toiletry and yeah. other things. So is that supposed to be the fact that you have, you have, you have been alleged of an offense? Does not make you inhuman? Uh, you are you are still a human being, and you should be taken care of. So for me, we don't have that, those facilities, and they're not there. And that was why I said, look. I expect um, most of these facilities to be in place or if you want to get anything uh, right. The custody, the prison, the barracks, whatever. And uh, so in that regard, uh, regarding the prison and other things, I will urge the Minister of the Interior to look into this and then make that place conducive for people who have been detained. And then a situation whereby you have a, a, a room that is meant for two or three people that will be occupied by 20 or more. There is no way it won't be discongested. Probably that's 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 exactly, but that's what happened in those areas because that maybe it's not made for it's not meant for those number of people mm -hmm. that have been detained in that, and that's why it's been uh, considered in that in that regard. I want to agree that look, is except we are deceiving ourselves. People, our, our detention centers or or, or custodian uh, whatever, whether in the military, whether in the police, whether in the court or, or in, the, in the in the in the correctional centers, they are they are they are all uh, not a. Uh, Nothing to write over that. Now, thinking about um, you know our politicizing um, everything, which unfortunately has um, involved the military also. Um, according to the spokesperson Wachuku, he he said um, that that their action is undermining um, the the you know the competence of um, the coas and of course the lieutenant. Yes, exactly. And the question is, do you think um, there should be or we would expect a solution, knowing that the spokesman is already um, trying to maybe not allow the issue, smear his boss in some way? Do you think even if the Minister of Interior is called into this particular issue, it would um, nosedive to helping the situation with his statement? One of the reasons why we don't have solutions to our problem in this country is that we don't tell ourselves the truth and we don't accept the truth. Rather than address when, when an issue is raised by somebody, a genuine issue, rather than look at the issue to ascertain whether or not this is a genuine issue or concern, they, they rather look at the, the, the person who make the, uh, who's bringing out the news or they want to say it's an attempt to smear the character the of a particular person. person. Yeah. So, in other words, they, 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 they drive away from the mm -hmm. main from issue the main and then they throw it to another mm -hmm. issue. So, they will, they will leave the issue that is, that is, that is to be addressed and then we are addressing a personal, personality. And so, it's a Nigerian uh, situation generally. We like that eye service. And then, why you, tomorrow, when that same uh, chief of uh, army staff is not longer there, the same set of people who are saying this today will come and say, ah, that man. He did this, he did that. Mm, he, he would have done, he had the opportunity he, that, to that, that he didn't do this, he didn't do that, that he didn't do well. That's what we are in this country. And uh, that's how you see when you criticize government uh, policy or activities or people see you as enemy of government or people see you as opposition, people see you as uh, uh, being sent by some certain people to come and smear the government. So they, 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 that it, it's, it's part of our culture. And, and it's a way, it's a defense, the way I see it. Mm. It's a defense, it's a way of... Uh, Waving uh, away what the, the main issue, and then they divert your attention to another is another thing. That's 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 the way I see it. It's just it's a deliberate effort by them to just uh, uh, make that issue look like uh, uh, nothing serious, so that uh, you people will not uh, uh, dwell on it uh, much. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, yeah, it's not new to me what uh, what he has done. It's a, it, it, we, that's what we have. We attach ethnic political sentiment to everything. 
if, if the political uh, uh, is not, uh, sentiment is not attached to it, it will be religious or other ethnic uh, sentiment. They will say uh, it's because the chief of service is Muslim or a Christian. Mm. That is why they were doing that. They were trying to uh, smear his character and then they, they not, so that the president will remove him or this and that. So, but the issue on ground will not be addressed. So that is the way, that's what we have. And that's why we're missing some of the points that we're supposed to key into in this country. And that's why when government brings up policies and when, we, when they don't listen to those uh, uh, observations by people and they see it as a attempt to 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 play opposition or to, to to play politics they won't get solution to it it's only when you know there's a problem that you have you get solution to it but we don't agree that a problem you will see it in another way there is no solution to it now with the case that we have ravaging nigeria right now in security and there's no other um, agency of the government that is head on on solving this problem than the military. How do you think this would affect the morale of serving soldiers in the military today, knowing that, of course, the air is human? And um, at one point or another, a military officer will would air and possibly would find himself incarcerated. How do you think this would affect their morale going forward? And what do you think the military can do to revamp a bat and bring them back to themselves to know that there is a reason why they're doing what they do and the, the, the future would be better. No, you see, in the, the little I know about a military uh, uh, operation, no, not operation, mm. structure in a way, um, uh, is that administration, is that they, they like uh, this discipline. They, they don't uh, condone uh, in discipline and they, they, they respect. If they, they, they follow it so much. If you disrespect your order, if you do anything that is contrary to the, the or, or, or to do, do, disobey command of your leader or whatever, they take it so seriously. And then uh, it's seen as a uh, mutiny sometimes, mm. as if uh, you want to. So, in, in subordination, is not something they, they condone. So, you must, and they want to discipline you. But in, what, what we're saying is that if you want to discipline somebody, discipline is not for you to make that person uh, suffer, it's for that person to think. And realize that I'm not doing the right thing, and therefore I will not do it again. But what we we'll do is, if you are a small criminal in this country, and then you are pushed into a custody or whatever, you become an added, added criminal because uh, the way I'm managed, what the environment you have been taken to is not conducive enough. So it's not about the discipline itself that we're talking about here now. It's not about there's nothing bad in detaining uh, any military officer who has who has committed an offense in line with the uh, uh, detention here. Mm. I'm talking about in line with the law. Yeah. Uh, so, but the where is it going to is the issue, the environment. So what we, what we are talking about now is that is to make that environment conducive for, for them, whether you have been disciplined or not even been disciplined. They, we need, they need a good environment and that will, that will motivate us, their psyche to be able to do, to do well. So if you complain of a, a bad habit and then you want to be disciplined, yeah, yeah, you can't be disciplined. I'm not against that. Uh, them being disciplined. I'm not, because I know it's part of the military uh, uh, training and uh, you cannot be disobey your elders. You cannot do things that are not uh, in line with the practice of the of the military. The and then if you do that, they, they punish you. But the kind of punishment they are giving them or the attention they are, where they are taking them to is where the issue is here now. That, that's where they come. That's the complaint mm. that they, they have been uh, treated like... They're treated uh, like... Um... Yes, <laughs> adding criminal. Mm. So uh, even adding criminal, they are not supposed to be treated in that way. They are not supposed to be to be put in a place where that is not conducive for mm. them because you are presumed innocent until the contrary is proven. Right, so so they must yes. provide an enabling environment in the, in, in the, what they call detention. Oh, Some people will say they call it detention, I say it's an enable, enabling environment. It is an enabling environment. It's for you to think and then uh, uh, and so that you will not uh, do what I uh, say you have done before again. All right. So uh, for the want of time, just before we go, uh, I think it's very important um, we ask this, this question. But for a bit, let's digress a little bit, you know, from the military to what happens in the outside world. You are um, a barrister and then you're very conversant with, just like you did say, you know, what we have, incarceration in, all, in, in non-military, you know, a system that we have. Um, uh, the issue of... Um, you know, having crowd, you know, crowded um, prisons and correction centers, like you rightly said. Um, what do you think is the problem? Is it that the judiciary uh, are not doing enough in order to empty those places? Or is it, um, what exactly is the, the problem? I, I know pro bono still exists. So what do you think is the problem that's making our correction centers 
overcrowded every other time. And of course, you people are the best to off to ensure that those those crowd you know get to diminish. So what is the problem? I, I think uh, the first people I would I would blame is the police. The police. Yes. Sometimes uh, I'm not saying they are the only person to be blamed. Okay. Even the court, the judges, the magistrates are uh, the judges and the magistrates are also they also have their share of share of blames. Even the, the environment has their, has their share of blame. Uh, why I say that I will blame the police is that look, there are cases that are not supposed to even go to to court. Mm. Doctors of them being detained, but because they want to extort you or they want to get something from you and are not able to get it, they push it to court. Things that are not even a, a serious offense, they make it serious. But then, why can't the court just strike it out immediately? And that is why I say I blame the court mm. sometimes too. Because if I were to be a judge or a magistrate, if a criminal case is brought before me, I will not just say just read the charge, uh, plead uh, guilty or not guilty. And then I will, I, will, I will apply for bail or not. No, I will ask you. I will ask you to tell me the a brief, a brief uh, uh, history or mm -hmm. not history summary of the fact of the of, of what happened. Because I've seen that in the in court where a magistrate uh, now is now she's now a judge. She mm -hmm. asked them to to she asked the prosecutor, please tell me what happened in this case. And after the after the narration of his story, he said, Ah, is that an offense? <laughs> so why are you bringing him to this? And he said, Oga, please go and sweep that uh, court and go. Hmm. So if you hmm. cultivate that kind of habit, they, it will reduce that pressure. But sometimes the the police and the courts sometimes they do as if they were working together in that regard. Somebody will just bring an allegation that is not that is unfounded, that is not backed by any evidence, and then they, they will just liberate one strong uh, uh, crime that they will not will not even be entitled to be, and then you won't be able to be there for years. So. It, that is it, and then the law also encourage uh, uh, enjoys uh, the magistrate and the judges to once in a while go to the pre uh, police custody, check the the detention and ask and and check uh, review their files, mm -hmm. and if possible, you can even grant bail in that in that place and and go. Or uh, sometimes uh, there are offences that are that are that are bailable that are not supposed to be uh, uh, given that kind of a, a, a detention mm -hmm. should be asked to go and uh, come back uh, or do community service, but they don't do that. So I I, I think. Uh, we have a environment that's not conducive as well. A lot of things are there. A lot of issues, reasons are there. Like I said, but majorly, I blame the the police who do indiscriminate arrests and they take you to court for things that are not even uh, that they cannot even uh, back up by evidence. Hmm. Wow. Well, that's so 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 um uh, un un unfortunate if you ask me, and like we did say, and like our guest Ambassador Tunji Abdulhamid did say, uh, correctional centres are meant to correct, you know, those who have been found guilty of one crime or another, and not further, you know, worsen the crisis and make them more hardened in their character and of course in their intent. Um, what we hope and what we wish for is that the military will take a um, decisive effort to ensure that what these uh, soldiers are protesting against will be done to ensure that we have um, a, a well, um, you know, built and well, you know, a good place for our military officers. I'd love to say thank you to Ambassador Tunji and Hamid for being part of our show today. Thank you so much for taking our time to be part of our show. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So, and for you watching, we'd love to say thank you so very much for being part of our show today. Please do well to visit our website, daily at www.enterprisetvnews.com. Like, comment, and follow us on all our social media platforms at Enterprise TV. So, I am Henry. I'll see you tomorrow for yet another great time on Enterprise Morning with Enterprise TV. Bye-bye. Enterprise TV, a tradition of truth.